welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Denali-30. When last we heard from our group, they narrowly survived an attack by a pack of gargoyles. A quick exit through a narrow passage pushed them into a larger cave where the creatures could not reach them. As Grish and Yolanda were both bleeding heavily, the cleric noticed eyes in the darkness. We rejoin them as the Zenobian begins his chant to summon light. A burst of illumination filled the chamber as the cleric finished his light spell. The glowing coin held in Grisha's hand shone brightly as he weakly lifted it above his head. The terrified group collectively sighed in relief as the magical light showed that the eyes were geodes of gemstones spread out throughout the area. Stance crawled over and stuck his head into the tunnel. I think the, I think the gargoyles have given up. I don't hear anything. Yolanda slumped down to the cave floor, passing out from her injuries. Harris quickly searched his pack and pulled forth a small vial. Last one, as he dribbled the healing fluid into the fighter's mouth. The pallor on her face receded, and she came to. Weakly, she uttered, Thank you, to the concerned wizard. Is she going to be okay? queried Grish. Stance and Harris both nodded, and the cleric began a healing chant on himself. A large sigh came shortly thereafter, and both injured party members regained some strength. Both stood up, a bit shaky, but waved off assistance from their comrades. <sighs> Where are we? asked a tired Yolanda. The group formed up two by two and began to search the chamber. A plethora of gemstones were found embedded in the walls. The group closely examined the stones, and Stance remarked that it was good Phidias wasn't here, or they would never be able to leave. Silence filled the room as the loss of their friend came to mind. Grish held back a tear and mentioned that he missed the mouthy little pain in the ass. A tunnel exit was found, and it was found to be the source of the fresh air, but it came with a steep drop. A few moments of silence followed, but no noise came up from the depths. Forward? asked Grish. I'm sure as Hades not going back, came the quick retort from Yolanda. An hour of winding through tunnels and on their last torch, the group found themselves in a chamber with a large corpse. I don't see it moving, said Harris in a, t a hushed tone. As if on cue, the creature stirred and snorted before repositioning its head on the stone floor. A large gourd rolled out of the giant's hand, spilling fluid everywhere. The liquid gave off a harsh odor, and Stance chuckled. The bastard's drunk. The group looked at each other, and Yolanda took the initiative. She moved over quietly and stabbed the creature in the head without a sound. Blood mixed with the spilled liquor and the fighter made her way to the other side of the cave. Peering around a corner, she disappeared momentarily before coming back to the group. <sighs> we may have a huge problem, Yolanda told the group as she began to loot the body of the giant. I think we have found the point of invasion. She continued as the group looked dejected. Grish shook his head. That's just great, two people down, Low on supplies and facing a giant invasion force. How many spells do you have left, mage? Harris began to extend his fingers, counting in his head. Three, maybe four that would be useful. None of them are very strong, though. I have one that could distract them. How many are there? Yolanda shrugged her shoulders. I couldn't get a good look. But there's a giant-sized skiff in the flooded cave around the corner and some boxes. I'm assuming they contain supplies. I heard moving around, but I didn't see any giants. But we know they're around. 
The dejected group sat in silence for a few minutes, pondering their options. You think we can skirt around them? asked a member of the Verte order. Another shrug from the fighter indicated that more scouting would be needed. If we had Phidias, he'd be happy to go. Grish spoke up. If we had Phidias, he'd already be in there screwing things up. The group was silent for a few moments, remembering their fallen comrade, and Grish spoke again. If the knight were here, he'd say it was our chance to shine and do some good, or some other bullshit knightly saying. Harris quipped, But neither of them are here, and those giants stand between us and life. I say we take a peek, deal with the enormous bastards, and try and get the hell out of here. Looking at each other, a chorus of shrugging shoulders and nods came out. Is there light in the next cave? asked Grish. Yolanda nodded to the affirmative, and Grish continued. Let's move up without my light, see if we can escape, and make a run for it. The group clasped hands, and Grish choked back his emotions. I'm... I'm very glad you're my friends. The moment of gratitude was broken by Yolanda, who uttered, Pansy, before smiling at him. Slowly, the group moved towards the front of the cave. There, the far side beyond the boat. That's the exit, Yolanda interjected. The exit to the sea? Are you part merman now? The cleric shot her an angry glance and gave a crisp retort. It is an exit. We may have to be able to climb up there. A loud pfft escaped Harris's lips. We had to go several hundred feet down, and I didn't memorize my fly spell this trip. <sighs> that is a lot of boxes, and I only see six oars, replied Stance. The group looked at him, and the puzzlement on their faces caused him to continue. Six oars. Six rowers. Six giants. Four dead with Omel and Phidias. One dead, drunk, courtesy of Yolanda. There should only be one left. That's four to one odds. The other members did the math in their head and looked at the boat. Grish spoke up in a hushed tone. Let's find that son of a bitch and get him the hell out of here. The dim light coming in from the ocean allowed the exhausted adventurers some sight and a scraping of boxes was heard on the far side of the cave. The quartet tugged on each other's elbows, guiding the group towards the noise. As they wound their way through the large boxes, they discovered the cave opened up and observed a hill giant moving some boxes against the far wall. An open area stood between the secreted group and the sole hill giant. Whispering, the party members weighed their options. After deliberating, it was decided that Stance, Grish, and Yolanda Two Blades would silently creep up behind the giant, while Harris remained back a bit for some spell support. As the trio silently crept up behind the giant, a noise from behind caught their attention. They turned, only to discover that the noise was from a muffled shout from Harris, who was now hanging in midair, flailing. Behind him, a blue giant stood wearing a large captain's hat. Morgor, we have company. The party quickly found themselves sandwiched between a pair of giants. Brother Stance gasped. A cloud giant. Despair fell over the group, and the cloud giant gave a hearty laugh and waved its hand. Harris's plummeted the ten feet down to the wet stone surface with the wind and knocked out of him. Morgor hungry? Lunch? asked the hill giant. The cloud giant nodded, smiling. Yes, Morgor, let us add some human to our diet. The two giants moved in as Stance, Yolanda, and Grish closed ranks and prepared to die. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.